From Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina, this is Tar Heel Illustrated. Com. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner and joining me as he always does for our three things post game video, our very own publisher Andrew Jones. And AJ, just a <laughs> bad day for North Carolina football. It's been a tough three weeks for North Carolina football in a lot of ways, and we'll kind of hit on a little bit of that later on in the show. But Carolina losing 39 to 10 to Clemson on this very field right behind. It's a little smoky in here right now. I'm assuming that's from the fireworks. I don't know if the oh, rain's yeah, got I, was I guess. I was thinking fog, but I, I'm a little confused as well. I'm assuming fireworks could be a little bit of the weather because it's a pretty rainy day down here. But Carolina fans would have liked to have been yeah. foggy like this during the game, so they wouldn't have seen as much. Yeah, they wouldn't have been able to see what, what they had to see today. And AJ, we'll, we'll start with the offense. There's a lot of different ways where we can go with this. I'm sure we'll go off in a lot of different directions on the way to kind of talk about what this means towards the end. But offensively, again, 10 points for the Tar Heels. Struggled mightily. It, it's, you know, it, it's disappointing, too, for Carolina fans' perspective because they started so well. You know, marched down the field. I think Clemson just kind of sleepwalking a little bit early in the game based on what happened throughout the rest of the game. But give credit to Carolina for starting the way they did. But that was about as good as it got for the Tar Heels after that. And again, it's an offense that continues to sputter in the red zone. The struggles are continuing. It's an offense that continues to give up sacks. It's an offense that continues to have a quarterback that is kind of forced to run for his life back there more often than not. And AJ, it's, I know we're in, what is this, game 13 now, but the themes and the things that we've talked about, especially during bad performances and losses this year, continued tonight, and it resulted in a really big blowout loss for the Tar Heels because of how good their opponent was. There are a lot of numbers. <laughs> we could just list all the list out. Yeah, yeah, really, and that's kind of what I'm processing with what I'm going to write. But I, it starts with the offense, and I know that some people are going to say, hey, they moved the ball tonight. I know yeah. some people we just talked to said they moved the ball tonight. But they've also said in the past that the only thing that matters is to score points. Yeah. So when you give up a crap load of yards, but you win a game, you know, 34, 31 or something like that, it's only about the points that matter. So I think that that should apply to the offensive side. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how many yards you gain, doesn't matter how many times you get in the red zone, the whole point is to cross the goal line, yeah, score, score, score points. And they have 51 points in regulation in their last three games. And you can throw the two overtimes and they have 54 points. This kick in overtime, this kick in regulation last week, block kick today, I think there was a missed kick two weeks ago. Yep. They've had interceptions in the end zone, drop passes in the end zone, pick six, fumble, that leads to a 23 yard drive. I mean, there was a seven, an 18 point swing in which Clemson amassed 23 offensive yards. Mm -hmm. Because the fumble, they took over at the 23, they scored three plays later, the pick six, that's no offensive yards. Then they faked the, the extra point <laughs> and scored. And then, um, the, uh, yeah, the pick six fumble, that, that's 18 points. Yeah, 18 points right there, yeah. Carolina had a stretch, I think, of four possessions or something like that that they got into the red zone and they scored three points. Yeah. Here's the stat. This goes back to the end of the third quarter in the Wake Forest game. This, to me, is the most telling stat because football's about scoring more points. Yeah, plain and simple. Mm -hmm. They have seven touchdowns in their last 41 possessions. Brandon P. ran these numbers earlier in the week about the fact that up to the Georgia Tech game, Carolina had gone one quarter without scoring. Yeah. They didn't score in the second half against Georgia Tech, and they didn't score in the second half today. In the last eight games, they've allowed 32 sacks. They've gotten seven. They had no TFLs today. They're next to, we're going to hit on defense and stuff too, but we're just talking. Yeah, we're just, just, just kind of talking. They're yeah. next to last in the nation in TFLs. Only three teams have fewer sacks than them. They played one more game. Mm -hmm. And that's hard to believe, too, but when you look at their record and they, just it, how yeah. good they've been at times this year, that's really you know, like, mind-boggling. In the last three games, they've given up 12 sacks. They have one, and that was the bad snap at NC State, mm -hmm. which I'm not sure. I guess you got to call that a sack. Yeah, but, but it's, it's I, gimme. I know it's dumping, and they have nine wins, and they won the Coastal, and there are a lot of things that are good about where the program is going. Yeah. I get that. I asked Mac on Monday about the fan reaction and that it's actually a positive mm -hmm. when they're angry. We've talked about yeah, we talked this about a, lot. It a lot this week, yeah. Because when he took over, there, there was apathy. Oh, we got blown out 30 to 10, whatever. That was expected. But the bar's been raised, expectations have been raised. Max, an unbelievable salesman about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. He knows how to spin when they don't play well in a way that makes it sound like, eh, hey, it's not that bad. He did that again tonight. 
that's why I asked him. Fans are angry and upset because you have raised the standard, because mm -hmm. the program has grown. But when it grows and standards are raised, expectations are higher, and the vitriol when you don't perform is greater. That was the point of my question. That was a piece I wrote the next day. And if you follow social media tonight, it was everything we've seen before times 100. Yeah, it's bad. And I, I think the fans have just cause, because I think every aspect of this football team has gone in the wrong direction in the last three weeks. I know the defensive stats were better for two weeks, but they played crap quarterbacks, crap situations. Mm -hmm. No disrespect. Well, it is disrespectful, but it's true. Mm -hmm. We have to be honest about things. So they lost to third four-string quarterback, Georgia Tech. They lost to four-string quarterback, NC State. They lost to a backup quarterback tonight, who Mack and the players admitted they didn't prepare for. Yeah. They said there wasn't enough on film, so they didn't prepare. I get that. It's kind of hard to prepare for a guy that has so much. Plubnik, I guess his most playing time was Syracuse, and he only threw the ball like three times, so I get it. But it didn't appear there were many adjustments. Here's a guy who hadn't played much. He comes in and hits his first 10 passes. Would have been first 11, but there was a drop. Yeah. Changed the game. Carolina didn't adjust well, and the offense didn't do what it was supposed to do, and that's score points. Doesn't matter how many yards you rack up. Doesn't matter how many times you get over here. If you don't cross the goal line, then you didn't do your job. That's the whole point. That's the complete reversal of the way you look at defense. So there's a lot to clean up, and we'll hit on defense and stuff now. Yeah, we'll hit on defense because, it, it, again, the defense struggled tonight. And one of the better opponents that they played tonight, obviously, Clemson top 10 team, Cade Kublik. I know he's a backup quarterback, but in terms of backup quarterbacks that Carolina faced probably under Mac in the last four years, he's the best one. He's a really good player. I believe he was the number one overall player in the class last year. So he's a really talented kid and a really highly rated quarterback coming into Clemson. But Carolina made him look every bit of that tonight. Yeah, he was fantastic. And I think the thing that was probably the most concerning for the Tar Heels is, like you just said, he comes in and, what do you say, completes his first, first 10, 10 passes. Yeah. He, he looked like he was incredibly comfortable out there. Ends up getting the MVP of the game. And AJ, I said this, I was on the field, and the difference between the two programs was just, it, it was amazing to me. Like because, you saw it in Yeah. It, it, Clemson, anytime they did anything positive, both sides of the ball, it, it was like they were storming the field. It was unbelievable. The, the culture between the two programs. And I know that's a place that Carolina's trying to get to, and they will probably and may never probably get to the level that Dabo Swinney's been able to get this Clemson program, but it was just so evident in terms of how hard they played, the belief they had, the team com camaraderie that was you could just see on the sideline oozing out of Clemson, not only in the stands, but on the sidelines and on the field with their players as well. So defensively, again, we've it, it's just kind of the same old problems with this defense. And again, faced a really good offense tonight. Kate Klubnick played really well, but to not prepare for him at all and, and to play you the way you do against him, it, again, it's a reason to criticize and question some of the things that the players and the staff have done this year. And again, it just wasn't good enough on the defense tonight. Not very little adjustments, very little improvement throughout the game. Yeah. Um, DJU has been better this year than last year, but he struggled a lot. And obviously Dabo had enough. Yeah. And he took him out of two, two series. But think about how much he struggled, how long people kept saying, even in the opener. <laughs> in their opener, people like, oh, we met at Georgia Tech. When's Dabo going to go to club? It's been happening all year long, but he kept going to DJU. Dabo's not an idiot. He knows what the hell he's doing. Mm -hmm. He's a legend. He's going to the Hall of Fame. He's got two titles. He's going to probably win more. Mm -hmm. He stuck with DJU because DJU was the best guy for this team. He's not going to just play a guy because of a promise made. or and He doesn't yeah. do that stuff. He doesn't roll that way. He doesn't need to roll that way. His program's so much bigger than that. So Klubnik didn't play for a reason. DJU played for a reason. So Klubnik finally gets a shot. And as Carolina has done so often this year, and Brandon P will have a piece about this this coming week, how many qu different quarterbacks they've played this year that have set single game career highs yeah. in some department against Carolina. In the last three weeks, it's off the charts. Mm -hmm. they, against guys that have really played. Yeah, it's it, that's that's a problem. They don't get a pass issue. rush. They had no TFLs. I only saw Miles Murphy with one chance at one, mm -hmm. and he missed the tackle. There's a lot that this team needs to fix. They have so many things that are that are well placed and well positioned, and we can't forget they won nine games and they won their division. But the last three weeks is a terrible look. It's been bad, yeah. It's a bad look, and I'm sitting there processing my five takeaways. I'm like. Should I just bullet point stuff? I mean, and I'm not. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be anything like that at all. But there's so much wrong the last three weeks. Mm -hmm. 
you, it, you could start with red zone. You could start with pass protection. You could start with receivers not getting open. You could start with Phil Longo's offense not being able to figure out how to move the ball in chunks against teams that drop eight. Mm. Yeah. They can't pick up blitzes. They, they don't consistently run the ball well. A little bit better on the right side than the left side. They ran left in the red zone tonight. Didn't get anything. Lost two yards. Sets up a second and 12 or whatever it was, and then they, their backs are against the wall. Mm. So there's a lot that's wrong, but we've seen him play better in a lot of areas earlier this season. This team is better than it's shown the last three weeks, but we have to judge them by the last three weeks. And Mac told us after Notre Dame, and we'll go to this next part here. I guess probably the third takeaway. <laughs> he told us after Notre Dame, Judge us after 12 games. Well, this is 13 because they got the 13th game. We can judge them after this. They're nine and four. Yes, that's progress. But last year's team never should have been six and seven. Mm -hmm. Never. So what should they have been? At least a nine-win team. This is a nine-win team against a schedule that had two good teams on it, and they both spanked Carolina, and then a couple of other solid teams, and one of them beat Carolina at NC State. NC State, yeah. I mean, what, what's their best win? Probably at Duke. Mm -hmm. That's their best win. Duke's a solid team, but. I don't want to take anything away from the kids because there's a lot of progress, Jacob. But we have to evaluate the whole. We can't just stop in Winston-Salem and say that's North Carolina. North Carolina still came out and played three more games, and a lot did not look good in those three games. Yeah, and, and can't, I'm not can't sugarcoat. It. And I'm not saying I'm not saying this is what happened, but this is what it feels like to me, AJ. And I think I've seen some Carolina fans that say the same thing. Again, I'm not saying this is what happened, but it, it's almost like Carolina won the Coastal and was content. Like, okay, we won the Coastal, we're good. We don't have to play anymore. We don't, we don't need to improve anymore. We, we, we peaked, we're good. Yeah. That's Like I said, I'm not saying that's what happened with the players or coaches, but from the outside looking in and just looking at it kind of in a black and white way like that, that's what it kind of appears well, like. Okay, you know what my motto is. I judge teams, I cover teams based on mm -hmm. how they perform and what they say about how they perform yes, yeah. in accordance with what their realistic expectations are. State admission. So Mac has told us in the past they don't handle success well. Mm -hmm. They don't handle prosperity. So that was the storyline after Wake. When we had the Monday press conference, mm -hmm. how are you going to handle this? Mm -hmm. Oh, we've been through it before. We've learned. Players said they learned. They got a lot more to play for. Some were even talking CFP and that kind of thing. But they didn't. So maybe there is something to learning how to handle prosperity. It takes time. Mm -hmm. This is year four. Go back and look where Dabo was in year four. Mm -hmm. A lot of great programs. It took time to build them. You have to learn by taking your lumps about this doesn't work and that does work. And just slowly piece this thing together. Yeah. And right now, there's it, the self-evaluation is not going to be good. Mm -hmm. They're not going to have a grand time breaking this thing down. No. And when they look at the last three, it's going to be an uncomfortable series of conversations mm -hmm. that Mac has with his staff. And it should be, because if this was any other team that was 9-1 and one and closed out the way this team did, they would have the same conversations too. Yeah. So the, the good thing for Carolina is they still have a chance to win 10 games, which would be the 10th time in school history. So what, they got an extra game. They got one because they won the division. And they have a chance to go play a pretty good team. Right now we're hearing a holiday bowl, <clears throat> excuse me, holiday bowl against Oregon. <clears throat> what a great opportunity to beat a program that's developed a brand the last 20 yeah, years. Yeah, no doubt. Go out to San Diego, get Not a little sun, place to go, yeah. get a little long flight for AJ, <laughs> back and forth, and have an opportunity to close strong get a good win. They have an opportunity to correct a lot of this stuff. Yeah, no doubt. But I said that this week going into the title game. Mm. I asked the guys about a reset and kind of washing away the last two games. They said, yes, we hit a reset. Mm. So now they have to hit a reset again. How many resets do they have in there? What is a what is a fair expectation for the number of resets a team has allotted during the course of the season, especially at the end of a season when they're supposed to be playing their best football? That's not the case right now. So Mac and his staff have a lot of work to do. They have a lot of evaluating to do. And um, the good thing is you're having hard conversations when you got nine wins in your pocket. Yeah, that's a positive. That's sure. a great thing. And they deserve props for that. They got nine wins. They won their division. You can't take those things away from them. No one can ever take that away. But they have to continue moving forward. And they've taken big steps backwards the last three weeks. So it's incumbent on them to take a big step forward here in the next month or so. Well, I guess the bowl game would be about three and a half weeks. Yeah. They have an opportunity. Yeah. So they, 
see how they handle. Yeah, we'll see what happens, AJ. And again, we'll, we'll be talking a lot more about kind of what we've learned from this game moving forward throughout the next few weeks and everything like that. So tough one for the Tar Heels, uh, a game on which I'm, I'm sure they would have liked to play a heck of a lot better than they did today. But overall, just weren't good enough. And Clemson, in a lot of ways, outclassed them today. It was that it was that evident. And you, you expected that in some ways when you look at where Clemson's been in the program that Dabo's developed. But as I think a lot of Carolina fans would agree, you probably expected a little bit better performance from the Tar Heels tonight as well. So, AJ, that's going to do it from us. Bank of America field. Carolina losing 39-210 here in Bank of America Stadium, I should say. I don't know what the heck the field's called. I don't even know if the field has a name. I always look at the time for late night. Yeah. Hold on. It's not even 1 a.m. yet. 12.59. Wow. That's record time right there. I've got to go to Blacksburg tomorrow. I honestly, go ahead and say this. I forgot. I didn't forget, but it escaped my mind that Carolina played the basketball game tomorrow until someone told me about 30 minutes ago. I was like, oh, yeah, they do play tomorrow. I was like, AJ's got to go up there. So You know what? It's been a tough week. Yeah, it has been, been a tough away week. Away from yeah. this stuff. Yeah. And um, having an opportunity to do this for a living is a blessing. Mm -hmm. And if my wife watches this, I love you, and you'll be okay. Yeah, now prayers up for it's been a tough week for AJ and his family, so guys, keep him in your, in your prayers and everything like that, and we'll definitely be doing that. So, AJ, we appreciate all the work you do, man. It's always a blessing coming here and talking a little Carolina football with you, and despite all the things you have gone through, still here on the field with me after it. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. So, tough one for the Tar Heels again. 39-10 loss to Clemson. Make sure you keep it locked to TarHeelIllustrated.com for all your coverage leading up to the bowl game, and obviously AJ will be in Blacksburg tomorrow, so make sure you keep it locked for that as well. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. We appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.